The Yamato is, well, the Yamato still needs no introduction. Why not, you stupid bastard? She's a legendary ship, and she also holds a very special place in my heart as the first tier 10 that I ever unlocked. She was also one of the two first tier 10 battleships added to the game, alongside Montana, and she's managed to resist power creep ever since her introduction for one simple reason. Wow, a gun! Well, nine guns actually. Nine 460mm guns, and unlike what my ex told me, size definitely matters. To explain why, we're going to have to enter Veritician mode. When it comes to high calibre battleship weapons in World of Warships, most are 457mm, or 18 inches. This is significant due to the overmatch mechanics present in the game, which require a shell's diameter to be 14.3 times greater than the thickness of the armour it's striking to automatically penetrate regardless of the impact angle. If we apply this calculation to a 457mm shell, we can see that these shells are capable of overmatching armour up to 31.95mm thick. Typical high tier battleship bow armour on the other hand is 32mm thick. I think you're beginning to see the problem with this. 457mm guns are unable to overmatch battleship bows at this tier, making angling a high tier battleship very effective against guns of this calibre or below. The Yamato proves that size matters. Her 460mm shells allow her to overmatch up to 32.1mm of armour, above the crucial number that battleship bow plating possesses. This allows Yamato to punch straight through battleship bows and sterns, regardless of angling, allowing her to deal much more consistent damage to these targets, no matter the angle. Of course, there are some ships that circumvent this rule due to hidden armour plates behind their bows that prevent citadels, <coughs> Kremlin, <coughs> but Yamato is still able to deal penetration damage through the bows of these ships, rather than the shells just bouncing off like they're, um, I don't know, Nicholas Latifi in a fucking wall. Skip it up and down now, there are other ships that are able to overmatch 32 millimeters of plating, but Yamato is the only tech tree ship that can do this. Mm. Mm. Yes, I know super ships in the tech tree now, but I don't. Okay, fine, fine. There are three tech tree ships in the game that can overmatch 32 millimeters of plating, but only one of those won't force you to remortgage your house or your parents' house if you're under 35. <laughs> Comedy. And that's the Yamato. Hanover and Satsuma, the Japanese and German super battleships, both possess guns capable of overmatching battleship bows, being 483 and 510 millimeters respectively. However, these ships cost an absolutely ridiculous amount of credits to buy, what? and I for one am too poor to even consider thinking about them. Incomparable and Shikishima also possess absolutely colossal guns above 500 millimeters in calibre, but to obtain these ships you have to grind stealing plan battles for hundreds of hours or lose your minds playing ranked and Ain't nobody got time for that! You know what you do have time for? Pressing the subscribe button. Oh for fuck's sake. It's free and it gives me neuron activation. Seeing the number go up. The caliber isn't the only good thing about Yamato's guns though. Her accuracy is almost unmatched. She has best in class Sigma, which combines well with very decent horizontal dispersion. Her vertical dispersion is terrible, however, so expect shots landing behind or in front of targets more often than you'd like. She also has the furthest gun range in the game, and if you're the kind of person who puts mustard and ketchup on their hot dogs, you could extend it more of a spotter plane if you, if you really want to. Now, it may feel like I spent a lot of time talking about Yabato's guns. That's because I have. But that's because it really is the one distinguishing feature that Yamato has about her that's kept her relevant throughout the years. To be perfectly honest, everything else about her is, to use a youth word, mid. Her armour scheme is decent, but she has a glaring weakness in her cheek which allows even heavy cruisers to punch through her armour from the front and get Citadel hits on her. Her mobility is terrible. With a top speed of 27 knots, she's only faster than the Vermont, and that's like bragging you're better at uploading consistently than I am. Her rudder shift is also really bad, but her turning circle is decent, so hey, there's that. She does have the best torpedo protection in the game, however, by quite a clear margin from second place. You'll need this, as her stock detection radius is massive, meaning she attracts torpedoes the way Bill Cosby wishes he could attract Her subpar protection scheme, coupled with her poor maneuverability and size big enough to see her from orbit, and no, not in that way, means that you're best suited to using the Yamato as a medium to long range sniper, using her excellent accuracy and range to your advantage to delete opportune targets from across the map. However, if you are forced into a close range fight, her overmatch capabilities allow you to hold up reasonably well against cruisers and battleships, but her cheek weak spot means she's incredibly vulnerable in such a situation, not to mention how her huge size and sluggish maneuverability makes her a juicy target for destroyers. Here's how you equip your space battleship. This one is pretty simple, so it shouldn't take too long. 
in slot 1, go for main armors modification 1. It's not like she needs a turret health, but honestly what else is she going to go for? In slot 2, go for damage control mod 1. In slot 3, go for aiming systems mod 1 to make the accuracy even better. In slot 4, go for damage control mod 2. In slot 5, concealment mod is the only real option unless you really want to see torpedoes coming. In slot 6, choose main battery modification 3, unless you offer her legendary mod, which is just as good of an option depending on your preferences. For a captain's build, choose something like this. Now go out there and become the... Yeah.